Hello and welcome back to another video. I just bought a $20 laptop from Cash Converters. This is what I picked up from their eBay store. I went to go pick this up in person since it was local in Adelaide. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why this was apparently 149 originally, but either way, apparently it works. So let's see exactly what we can do with this $20 laptop. This is the ASUS T100TA-DK003H. Yeah, great name, right? A hybrid tablet with a detachable keyboard that cash converters were at one point selling for 149 Australian dollars. It's a very compact device, one that does need a bit of cleaning, I must say. And unlike most tablets from 2014, this is running a full 32-bit version of Windows 8 instead of Android. There's a cool little feature I just noticed, and once open, the keyboard is raised for an even better typing experience. However, this doesn't entirely compensate for the very small keys which may hinder a fast typer, and the release mechanism still feels strong even after eight years. This didn't come with any accessories, however, it can be charged by simply plugging in a 5 volt micro USB cable, and a short time later it was loaded into Windows 8. Remember the start screen? Yeah, everyone loved this feature, hence why it was never seen again. But what's it like using one of these outdated hybrid tablets in 2022? Well, we'll find out after a word from today's sponsor. Recently, AMD sent over all the ingredients necessary to build a true beast of a gaming PC. This included their gaming-oriented CPUs and powerful 6000 series GPUs. These combinations of AMD components hit three different price points and target resolutions. And we can maximize the frame rates and performance thanks to AMD's smart access memory and Radeon Super Resolution image upscaling. AMD's refined the Radeon RX 6000 series graphics cards for 2022, boasting better performance than last year's models. By combining AMD these technologies, I was able to dramatically boost the performance of the already impressive hardware. If you're after 1080p gaming on a budget, the 6 core 5600 CPU combined with the 6650 XT graphics card has you covered. And at the high end, there's the 5800X3D with a whopping 96 megabytes of level 3 cache. Combined with the flagship Radeon 6950 XT graphics card, you can cut through games running at 4K like butter. If you want to watch me building this PC, the link to the full video is on screen now, and you can learn more by going to AMD's website website linked in the description. Thanks to AMD for supporting my channel, and I'll be back with more old tech videos really soon. Before I go ahead and use this device, a cleaning is definitely in order. We'll start with the cache sticker on the lid. I thought I was going to be able to simply peel it off, however, the sticker had different plans. This is where some cheap sticker remover comes into play. Simply apply a few drops and let it soak into the sticker for a few minutes. Then, using the included plastic scraper, I slowly lifted the gunk. Then, I applied some eucalyptus oil to clean the rest of the lid. There are a number of different scratches and scuffs on here, so it'll never really look perfect. The back of the keyboard dock is covered in a soft rubber, which made removing the permanent marker difficult. I tried eucalyptus oil, isopropyl alcohol, spray and wipe, as well as sticker remover, and nothing seemed to make it budge. I then gave the keyboard surface a wipe down. Be sure to do this with any laptop you buy secondhand. You never know what's on the keycaps. Last of all was the display surface, pretty grubby due to it being a touchscreen, and it definitely looks a bit better now. I then went ahead and did a fresh Windows install and put a few games onto it. It was also pretty cool being able to charge it from a cheap battery bank, and thankfully the inclusion of a USB Type-A port on the keyboard dock means I can plug in an external DVD drive. First of all, I tested Star Wars Battlefront 2. With the graphical settings lowered, it was actually really playable using this 2W CPU. Yes, that's right, a 2W processor. It's a quad-core Atom Z3740 with turbo boost capability and a base clock of 1.33 GHz. However, this system is definitely let down by the puny 2 GB of RAM. Trying to run the latest version of Minecraft without Optifine, which hasn't been released yet, was a slog even at low resolutions. And feel free to join my Anarchy server if you'd like to. It did, however, run old school RuneScape a bit better, and sometimes the frame rates dipped a bit, but it's still very playable nonetheless. Where this tiny laptop shines is with web browsing and typing up documents. I did find it a bit hard to type with large hands, but this is definitely infinitely better than having to type using an on-screen keyboard. Full HD YouTube playback was also totally fine on this machine, even with the limited RAM running the latest version of Google Chrome. And being a modern browser, every web page I can think of loaded correctly and pretty fast. So for gaming, you're definitely limited to older titles, which is great if you're into retro gaming. I would highly recommend using an external mouse though, as the track 
trackpad is not only tiny, it's also pretty bad quality, but that didn't stop me from giving it a solid try. But what is it like using it as a tablet? Honestly, not bad. The touchscreen is pretty responsive and the display panel is bright, but man is it cumbersome to hold. The huge bezels didn't help either, I must say. It's a far better experience using it with the keyboard unless you're watching movies, I'd say. Now let's open it up and see what's inside. To get in, you've got to go along the edges to unclip the casing. No screws need to be removed to do this. Be careful not to pull up on the USB and HDMI connectors on the side. Here we've got the motherboard, nothing upgradable in here, and the RAM is definitely soldered in place. The 31 watt hour battery still lasts many hours, perfect for the low powered hardware of this tablet. Another part I was impressed by was the stereo speakers. They sound a lot fuller than they look. And it looks as if the bottom casing has some copper to help dissipate heat. If one of the parts were faulty, it would be pretty easy to repair as most things appear to be modular. This was a very affordable device even back in 2014. If it had maybe 4GB of RAM, it would probably be even more useful today. Thank you very much for watching. It's honestly quite interesting to see just what you can still do with a small laptop like this. Although to be fair, it's not exactly that old, it's just that most people don't really have a use for such a low powered thing like this, considering phones and tablets have really taken over. And this thing actually can sort of be used as a tablet as well if you wanted, considering it has a touchscreen and Windows 8. Either way, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.